Those are strong champions. Olaf being banned out, and Shivana as well. Not a surprise to see Kassana on the ban list. The one game he has been let through in the past two weeks, it was a surrender. So, yep, no Kassana. Don't ban Kassana once, shame on you. Don't ban Kassana twice, shame on me. You're out of the World Championships. Third time, we'll pick it for ourselves. Cloud9 yeah. gets revenge. Uh, it works. But yeah. the Mundo, all the way yes. through, this is going to be pretty big, and it means that we are going to have that extended game for him. And this is interesting to me because Mundo hadn't been that hotly contested throughout the, the, the tournament so far this weekend. Yeah, definitely but this is, less. Exactly, but this is actually a really good one for Quas. And the interesting thing with him is uh, he often runs some barrier Mundo. He's been trying it out just because you get low and then you bear your bait while you're regening through your ultimate. And that extra two seconds gives you a lot of extra buffer there. We'll see if he ends up running for it. He's also a sometimes jungler, but really... Uh, Mundo's great because he becomes so difficult to deal with for the back line. Doublelift kept talking about backstage uh, when he was on the analyst desk how difficult it is for AD carries to deal with Mundo because you can't push him away, he keeps regening, he will get on top of you and he'll eventually burn you out. Absolutely, gets right into the fight. On the side of Cognitive Gaming, we are seeing the Ziggs that pass through, found many bans in the last game of Cloud9 and Fnatic. Captain Ziplock looking to possibly ring in the support here. You may remember Captain Ziploc from Loud Mortis and Ziploc and the Great Escape at PAX, mm -hmm. where they kind of duked it out for a while and then ended up backing right next to each other. So I like this champion setup so far from Cognitive. It's it's a lot of things that, that work together and make any kind of team comp you want. So if you want to go heavy team fighting, Leon is there to initiate for you. If you want to run a bunch of picks, which we actually saw work very well for Coast and I believe mm -hmm. their game three win over Walking Zed, Leon is a big part of that as well. So. Uh, being able to just engage. Also, you've got a really safe uh, pick here with the Ziggs where you can guarantee a strong lane, guarantee a good mid to late game transition as well. And Zenfiro's going to have a good time in this one. Nothing out of the ordinary that we have been seeing. No Moomoo's, no Warwick's, no Fiddlesticks just yet. No. So we'll see what they do have. Lucian being picked up here. Cop, one of the more, as even Steve said, watching him go through his career, Liquid said, that he has changed his playstyle because he did get criticized quite a bit from the community. You're too lax sure. in your playstyle. You don't aggress enough or take that definitive push in the fight when you need to. And I thought he really changed that around really well during the summer split. We saw kind of a brand new cop in the middle of last year, started playing a bunch of Draven. Uh, rumor has it he's still got that in his back pocket, actually. A lot of AD carries have been playing him again. Uh, but I like the Lucian pick here. It's an aggressive champion, right? It's going to fit into, I think, his sort of his new play style. Dominic called him smart, not passive, not reckless. Um, and, and honestly, with the Lucian plus Andy Lane together, they've got a lot of aggression there, a lot of ability to make plays. Uh, right, Mundo in the front line as well. This is a strong duo lane that's going to hold up to anything Cog throws at him. And overall, if this Elise is locked in here, these are some very just high priority power picks coming out of this weekend for both teams. Already an explosive game shown by these champions. And we see the Elise being banned out last game because of that early game pressure, how much she can provide for the lanes and that gap closing. But they're still all going to decide on the vibe. Very interesting. Leave that up. Okay, so COG right now have a team that's pretty focused on Nothing Here. Uh, now, Nothing Here doesn't get a lot of the praise on Cognitive. He's one of the more overlooked members there. Mm -hmm. But when you've got a high damage late game carry like Jinx, you can set her up to carry a game for you. And you've got hardcore engage from Leona, hardcore engage from Vi, and the follow-up from Ziggs and the follow-up from Jinx herself. She's going to get those passive resets and start taking over a game. And right now, that's what Cog's comp is looking to do. So Curse needs to be a little bit careful to make sure they're not going to get picked out in open field here. Final picks coming out into the game. We heard Cognitive coming into this champion select saying, we have really nothing to lose here. We have everything yeah. to gain. And that's one of the things that makes it the scariest. I was talking to quick shot about some of the European players and when NIP was playing after the games they said those were some of the most stressful games in the world because I've never had that much to lose. I, I imagine like I haven't actually ever fought on that kind of a stage like I feel like tournament games <laughs> where there's not a lot there and it's like a little bit shaky but like I it's just got to be mind wracking All to the play nerves. on this level I can't believe it so curse of course the rest that of their, their lineup coming through and it is going to be Jungle Mundo. Okay, so this is a cool lineup. I'm trying to look at it here. They've got an interesting mix of different objectives here. So they've got a lot of early to mid game pressure. Renekton's got an early power spike. Mundo does pretty well out of the jungle mid game as well. Uh, and honestly, you can start putting a lot of pressure in as soon as Trinity Force is done as Lucian. Yeah. And he's ready to initiate pretty much at level two. If you want to like flash W someone, you're fine to do that. Uh, and even if that all fails, they have this fallback pattern of the needle poke and the needle sustain. So. Uh, it's more of a well-rounded lineup than a single-purpose curse lineup. Some power, more power coming out with the uh, the ribbon pick that has been banned through previous games, usually for the mid, though. 
Now we're going to probably see this in the top lane. Yeah. So both teams locking these in. Huge lane pressure coming out of Cognitive here. Boy Boy is really just going to be throwing spears. Mm -hmm. It's the lane pressure from Cog. That's what I'm looking at. Oh, yeah. So Zamfiro is going to have a much easier time in lane compared to Boy. Uh, even when you get Cougar Form and get some wave through, you still have to be aware of bombs, so that mid lane matchup is rough. But I have to also commend Cog for waiting so long in their top lane pick. You notice that Curse waited to grab Renekton until the very end. They wanted it to look like Mundo was the yeah. top laner, even though it's actually Dominate's jungler here. And Cog waited to pick their top lane matchup to say, we know it's Renekton. Okay, Riven, Chris, go win your matchup here. We'll see if he can do that. Chris actually just coming in. I believe on December 2nd for iDream, he's going to be taking that spot over. So he is still melding with the team. We'll see if, you know, Riven's kind of that solar player to win your own lane and then get with the team. We'll see if that's what he capitalizes on. As the teams load onto the Rift for our final promotion tournament matchup, let's check out who you think will win. According to LOLEsports.com, 84% of you expect Curse to regain their slot in the LCS. And 16% of you think Cognitive will pull off an upset. So it's definitely not a surprising number to see from the fan vote. Right. I think uh, the series itself will be a little bit closer than that. Um, I, I think that's there's a little bit of like fan bias there as well as oh, of uh, course, you know, of course, which is right standard, of course. But uh, I don't know. The fans have done a pretty good job of predicting games even throughout the World Championship. So uh, I got to give you guys some credit. You tend to be pretty good at this. So looking at these compositions, Lucian, Annie, Jinx, Leona. We're we gonna see a lane swap for these guys. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see because whenever you have a Leona lane, the most important thing is who is level two first because she doesn't do freaking anything until level two. Uh, just wait, just wait. Right, and you're just kind of sad. <laughs> and he's going to have her stun already, and it has 625 range, which is 500 more than Leona has. A yeah. uh, little bit of hard matchup to win if you're Leona in that case. Um, and just in general, uh, it, a lot of it's going to be these teams setting their dueling up for success. If it is a 2v2, that's the important thing. Uh, Lane swaps we're trying to think about in general. Honestly, I feel like it's a bit easier to keep a Riven down than keep a Renekton down. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the final NALCS Spring Promotion Tournament has now set into motion, and we will find out who is your final member of the North American LCS between Curse and Cognitive Gaming here. Best of five series, and we are in game one. Okay, so here we go. Looking at the opening buys, 10 ward trinkets. So a lot of vision required for these guys. No one's looking to sneak in an early gank by grabbing like an early sleep, uh, sweeping lens and saying, okay, well, I'll sweep your wards out and then I'll set things up. The other interesting thing is that Zekent opened Doran's shield. He's actually looking to be in a lane with a lot of fighting. That's actually a curse looking for the 2v2 because Cog is going to have much less combat stats here, which will be an interesting thing to watch for. Trinkets on the wards all the way around. It looks like we have pretty much the same start besides the Doran's ring on the side of Zamfira. Curse feeling out the map right now, and it doesn't look like Cognitive wants anything but really to set up a defensive line of scrimmage. Curse yeah. is getting, getting what they want out of it. If they're not placing the wards, then they're just looking for the kills. Yeah, both teams doing a good job of checking brushes with long-range skill shots. Dominate actually mm -hmm. starting Cleaver is a little bit slower for your first couple of jungle camps. Uh, Burning Agony would probably increase your damage just a little bit while you clear your first stuff. So he is going to need uh, somewhat of a pull. He's going to need some help from somebody, which means if he gets a pull from his duo lane, he either has to burn Smite or his duo lane gets behind, unless they're in a 2v1. That's something that has to be on Curse's mind right here so that they don't lose um, an early lane match getting jumped on by a Leona when they're not high enough level. We have Zekan on your screen there talking with Q. See, Zekan actually uh, kind of proclaimed, not proclaimed, as known as one of the players that really can m have chemistry with anybody. And that's yeah. very hard. Some things always look good on paper, but when you put it on the field, it doesn't play the same. And he has actually had very good results with whatever AD carry he's been put with, which yeah. is great. He's doing a good job being very adaptable. The other support I think of that's kind of like that is like Lemonation, who yeah. right, we keep talking about <laughs> him, like training up supports. He fuels the AD good. carries. Just yeah, makes him better. Yeah, I mean, Zeke, I think, is good fuel. And, of course, you got to consider Cop the same way. He's played with, what, four different supports over the last, like, seven months, Yeah, right? Um, that's like, true. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty quick turn, right? And yet he's still putting out good performances, still having a strong lane presence in general. And actually, uh, again, talking with uh, both Voy and Devilif backstage, mm -hmm. we had Voy for the interviews. Right. Um, Devilif was like, he personally doesn't really respect the Cop Zekent lane because, for some reason, he tends, double tends to be Cop's kryptonite. But everyone else says uh. Cop's really, really good and tends to do very well in lane. So outside of having to fight CLG, Curse's duo lane does really well. Sometimes you, you can always pose a threat as a thorn in someone's side, and mm -hmm. you just don't, they don't know why you can get around them. We saw it last year, kind of like Coast Dignitas, or a few of the, even team matchups all together had that issue. Absolutely. We'll see if it really plays true if Cog gets in the 
or I rather, Curse gets in the LCS if that double lift mid lane matches up. So starting in the jungle now, we are back into the matchup of our first game. And it looks like it's going to be that easy red start for both. Not too much is going to happen after that invade. Really no wards were placed on any offensive side. They're all defensive wards. Yeah, all the early jungle invades happened at about a minute mm -hmm. uh, to a minute 10 seconds in. So the trinkets haven't even been unlocked yet. So instead, uh, these guys kind of pull, pull back a little bit, put their wards to watch for jungle invades. So no invades will be successful. They'll be spotted out and get collapsed on really easily. Uh, just a point of things that happened. So Dominate did, in fact, smite his own buff. He's pulling down Quas because he's going to take some damage doing this. And besides, it is actually a 2v1 matchup overall. Yeah. To me, that's Cog seeing the Doran Shield Annie and saying, you know what? Let's just get the gold generation from the coin. Let's you know deal with this whatever. Dodge Lucian for now. That's going to let this game kind of transition a little bit later into the game before uh, crazy fights start happening. So we'll see how they play these if they try to go fast for the turret or fast for the aggression on Quaz's health bar. And it looks like a little bit of both. They're just getting their cake and eating it too. Slowly on three minutes, and it looks like they will actually pull Dominate towards the top lane here. But Quaz says, it's fine. Do you think? Yeah, Quas actually is not really getting punished for his 2v1 is the thing. He's sitting there, able to last it decently, already has six minions. The first wave already got pushed into the turret. Mm -hmm. So the, the push pressure is so much lower now. Compare this to Curse. They've got a giant minion wave. Every caster minion's alive. They've got an almost full health cannon minion. And they're going to be some almost two, almost level three champions hitting it together. This is going to be a lot of pressure on the structure here. And that's something we got to pay attention to. Curse, understanding the 2v1 lane, pushing it a lot slower, not feeding Chris the CS. His Quas is just eating it up because his lane was pushed so fast. Exactly. This is going to slow down uh, Chris quite a lot. Riven doesn't do a heck of a lot without items. Uh, when this turret eventually does go down, I want to yeah. see how Chris reacts and gets himself back into the game because I don't imagine it being very good. However, because of Ziploc coming in, it's going to be really Whoa, rough. Oh, Cobb getting a little too aggressive there. Barrier's on. He flashes the flash. And Zekent's going to have that as well. The red buff may take one more time, but I don't think Ziploc is going to get that Vault Breaker up. They will go for a little bit of the damage, but it won't be enough to follow up for First Blood. But that was a success there for Cognitive Gaming. Burning summoners or not, this removes yes. so much of the pressure. Chris has to recall back. Chris has a free lane to farm up and catch up in levels. And suddenly, you know, as, as much as we were like, oh my gosh, Quash has 16 CS, it's going to be so fine. It's fine now for Chris. Oh, nothing here. Now taking a bit of damage. Burning Agony very, very hard on the damage, but he could not get the cleaver off. A little over the shoulder of Zane King there, pie to the face. So now I'm curious to see if uh, nothing here has to recall as well. Looks like he's going to just, yeah, with Qua still having Flash and Ignite available, yeah. there's too much all in potential. He's got to go back. So Cobb and Zekant kind of playing lax in the bottom lane. Didn't expect Ziploc to go hard, and they are not going to let Cognitive do that again. They know they will go on the aggression very fast. We're coming up onto five minutes. Everybody's got enough to kill each other in lane just about right now. But we got Bax in the top lane. Quaz doing very well for himself. 26 to 60, yes. Yeah, it's very, very impressive. In fact, uh, Chris took his time. Uh, when he got the lane push, he took mm -hmm. the time to go back and buy a new item. So he's actually matched with Cops so far. They both have double Dorans there in their lane. So he'll be actually uh, a bit better off than he was before with this new Doran shield and uh, surviving his lane matchup. And here's that. Quaz unpredictability, the pickaxe for a first buy on his back. He is going for straight aggression. The man says when he started playing, he liked to look at flame. Learned off of that, mm -hmm. but he never stays on one thing. Keeps adapting and innovating to his own playstyle. Yes, yeah, the funny thing is the Koreans don't play Tiamat or Hydra top lane. Mm -hmm. They all go full tank. And Quaz says, no, I'm a playmaker. I'm one of the best top laners in North America. Now, he doesn't compare himself to other people. But critics all say he's arguably the best top laner in North America. Yeah. Uh, so you give him a champion like Renekton, and give him a Tiamat, he's going to start killing some people. It's weird, right? Because he played from New World Eclipse back at PAX in the Challenger yeah. promotion, and nobody really grabs a name. But now he's pretty much eyes watch on this game for Curse. So we'll see what he can do. We're only six minutes in, and he's already caught our eye with the buys. We'll see if he can do more. Chalice is in middle here. Void Boy is trying to stay alive, but so is Zamfira. They're just going to match up and pretty much not kill each other. That's a skilled matchup right there. Yeah, it's going to be Boy Boy surviving almost for sure. Yeah. When Vi gets ulti, there's a chance Nid could go down. But honestly, Barrier Needly, Doran Shield opener, Chalice already, it's mm -hmm. very unlikely. Uh, but Zamfira's just going to have more pressure on the lane. You can see when Void goes into Cougar form, he can get harassed whenever he tries to last hit in melee range. Zamfira can keep the pressure on, can either go for turret damage and pull in Ziploc, or can roam through another lane and force a gank with Ziploc. See how the pressure's going in these side lanes still. It looks like Cog has somewhat slowed down the pressure, not allowing Quaz to get as much as he did before. They're playing it a little bit more correct here. And the bottom lane is still down 18 CS, but 
We just saw Chris and Ziploc do a bit of damage for themselves. Quas taking a good amount of damage. Dominate on the backside to read the aggression. Ooh. I don't think Zane King wanted that to connect. It's going to be big damage. The flash is down. The first blood comes in, and it's for Quas. Really well played by Curse. Not what Zane King wanted no. to do afterwards. He's like, I didn't mean to... Hit that hit. <laughs> That's one of the times you don't want to hit a skill shot. You wish it was just for style points here. Uh, this is going to be the all-in though on Zekent. they're going real hard. Chris actually just used his gap closer, so they got a little bit of weight before they catch up to Zekent. And the exhaust is still used there, so very well very well played. Cop tries to get a few more damage. So that's an ultimate for a summoner spell. Um, I actually got to say I like that trade mm -hmm. in the near future better uh, for Curse. But in the long run, once the ulti comes back up, that assault and battery, then of course the cooldowns don't match up. But I know ult Vi is so much pressure off of Voivoi. Boy Boy. Wow, dominate pretty much everywhere on the map. That bottom pressure from Ziploc negated twice now. They are blowing summoners, but they're still not getting out of it, anything out of it. Got Zamfira winning in mid, so there's not much pressure Ziploc needs to be giving there. So maybe they can keep doing this. Maybe they'll have to switch it up soon. Yeah, so right here for Cog, uh, I feel like the, the problem is their hamstring because Riven can't do anything right now. And yeah. they kind of need her to power up to be useful. <laughs> if, if that ever became a 1v1 matchup, Tiamat Renekton versus Doran's Blade would be the easiest matchup you've ever had in top lane. There's no way you're going to win that one. So uh, Cog needs some time. The unfortunate thing, though, is Curse is kind of waiting to power up. The, the laning phase is almost kind of their weak point where, no, boy's not going to have an easy lane. You know, you've got to deal with the Jinx pushing regardless. So the map's going to kind of unlock more in the near future. It's like they're going to get the first turret out of this one and be able to move that 2v1 lane around. Dominate throwing down the ultimate. It's going to get Flame Chopper. Oh, he's going to take a long way around. Actually, whoa, Quaz diving over the Chompers right before, right after they go down, I should say. And Zane King locks it up. You can see Dominate giving the yell. Yeah, that's a really good choice there by Dominate and Quaz to return to that lane over and over again because the flash being down from Zane King and plus being dead not getting experience means he's going to be underperforming for a long time. You can keep picking on that yep. champion. Well, if Ziploc, once again, just backing from bottom lane, he keeps presenting himself down there. Dominate's going to keep going to the lane where they're getting their kills from. Exactly. And it's going to snowball Quas, and that's a wonderful thing to do when you're cursed. It's a team that's actually very solo lane focused. Kopp and Zeke can't hold their own. They're actually quite good. But in terms of playmakers, it's Quas and Void. That's where Dominate's going to want to spend most of his time. We'll see that, I think, more throughout this game and this series. Quas holding it down in the top lane. This is exactly what they wanted to do for him. Get him going very early. And we are going to see this matchup. And Chris probably won't want to go too hard. He actually tries to match damage before he tries to mitigate anything that Quas is putting out here. Well, yeah, as Riven, you've really just got to right. buy offense to get defense. Uh, I <laughs> almost never see, like, Sunfire Riven. I don't know, actually, as of the new season, Spirit Visit as a second or third item started becoming popular for Riven. Yeah. But it still never showed up until the core of like Bloodthirster or Hydra plus a Brutalizer or Last Whisper got completed. So Chris, he's got to catch up to get enough damage to be useful, and then he can worry about not getting two shot by people. Looks like they're sending three towards that bottom lane. Going to see Dominate dip into the jungle real fast, but possibly go back after nothing here in, in Zane King in the bottom lane. This would be the first time, and it might surprise him enough, but it looks like Kog has something on their mind as well. Yeah, Dragon starts becoming really important here. You're seeing, I think, better pink ward control right now from Curse, but you're seeing Cog spend a lot more time down here. Uh, with Captain Ziploc having his ulti back available, he's going to maybe look to force a gank in the bottom lane, use a kill to build map pressure, and turn that into Dragon. Slowly creeping in from the wing. Not a lot of wards coming in. This is also red by Ziploc, but actually this is Ziploc again to the bottom lane. I should say this is red by Dominic. He goes in first, and it looks like they are not going to be ready to go in. They kind of just hold off. Yeah, so for now they're going to kind of trade back and forth. But the one advantage is that Cog can outpush the mid lane. So Zamfira can get down mm -hmm. there before Boy and then can make a 4v3 or 4v2 now that Dominate's leaving the map. This is a good chance for Cog here. Zamfira is going to recall instead, but they still have the chance for a kill. The 2v1, got to mention it, playing out hugely in favor. 79 to 49 for Curse. They are up in this. They may be losing a bit of... Actually, they've even CS in the lanes. They were losing an ADC and on uh, the mid lane, but they're getting everything back. So this lane is just fine right now. It looks like with Cog, they're trying to bait out the Mundo gank by pushing in a little bit and saying, hey, are you here? Are you here? Yeah. Leaving uh, Captain Ziploc around, but Dominate said, you know what? Screw it. Nothing to do at all. Uh, no gank force. Of course, Trinket Wards were already in that other brush, meaning that there's no way Cog could sneak it in. So a lot of wasted time for Ziploc, whereas all of Dominate took another three jungle camps that whole time. So you're going to start to see a much more impressive jungler on one side. 
He's going back to the top lane, trying to get Quas more kills. And we're going to have a roam from the jungler, or mids, I should say, on both sides. This turret looks to be going down. And it's not really much of a roam from Boy Boy. He still has vision on Zamfira. He's just going to go for the Wraith. So they get more gold in their favor, 16,000 to 15,000 now. It's almost 17. But 2-0 to zero in kills. Looks like Cog is almost fighting over resources here. They both wanted those golems. Yeah, so Cog feels a little bit more confused right here. They've not made any plays in a while. They had one sort of lame attempt to get a gank down in the bottom lane, whereas Curse are clearly showing the signs of what they want to do. They're looking for a right. more late game matchup. Boy has taken Wraiths many times in a row right here. Dominates is kind of sitting there with Quaz saying, okay, the two of us are going to make plays, push turrets, take up kills. Everyone else can tread water, but at some point, Quaz gets too big. Voy holds up skills the late game, and now we can start making things happen. They aren't powerful enough. They do have the Mega Inferno Bomb, which is great for the AoE objective of going for Dragon, but Curse with very good damage taking that one down. Level 9 Quas and a level 8 Dominate to be the front line right now. There goes the calling on the backside. Quas in the bush. Who is going to reinitiate this fight? It's Ziploc to the back line, but the team is not there to follow, and they are going to pursue him. Nothing here going, getting excited, trying to get back to him. Can he get that W? The snap down. No, Cop picks it up with the passive. And it looks they're like they're able to in, come right? out. Chris does have those broken wings on. Wind Slash coming out. Doesn't get the kill execution, though. Chris goes down immediately. Double kill coming in for Cop as he puts himself back in the fight. That's the aggression that Curse was looking for. It could be turned around, though. A very nice satchel charge to pick up the kill, and it's a double kill for Zamfir on the roam. That was a very hectic fight right there, Riv. The pack line got completely spread out, and now it's Cog with the map control. The problem is Dragon was already taken. So watch what Quas does here. I think he's completely separated from the rest of his team. He ults in and then dives by himself and just can't yeah. kill nothing here. So he becomes useless. Ziploc actually almost gets out, which is incredibly impressive. But what I like is that the rest of the lineup for Cog is just healthier. It's a good call to go back in. The flash stun sets up the entire fight right here. And then Cog just knows they can take it. And we talked about this team being built to set up nothing here's Jinx. These kills do not happen for any champion other than Jinx. The Flash Satchel, just to set up another kill, that's the kind of stuff you do, and nothing here is going to be really scary late game. So those kills nicely spread out. That way they were down quite a bit in kills. They now bring the gold just to 1,000 in itself. 4-4 four to four on those, and they find the turret, or each team finds a turret or has. Looking at that scoreboard once again, the Hydra being finished up now by Quas, and it looks like Riven is instantly going for her own Hydra. Yeah, so he's finally catching up there. The damage difference between a, a Hydra and a Tiamat is not that far off. Of course, yes, Quas is ahead. He's got levels. He's got gold. Like, Quas is still going to win this matchup, but it got a lot closer this time around. So Chris is going to start having a much better time in this game uh, and can start making a few more plays by himself. The difficulty, though, is that Curse is sort of like, hey, let's go get to late game. Started getting picked apart there because nothing here is going to start being really scary. He's a little bit behind in Bloodthirster, but he got that kill in a couple of assists in a team fight. Yep. So you suddenly have to start worrying about Jinx and saying, can we get rid of him in a team fight? And we see in the mid lane that ward just back by Zamfira, making sure he doesn't roam too far. That way that Void Boy can let everybody know if a Mega Inferno Bomb is coming. And that whole mid is warded in somewhat of a trifecta, and then their other ward for Pink Ward and Dragon. Yeah, I'm really impressed by Cog's ability to put ward coverage down. A lot of that happened because of the team fight they won. They got mm -hmm. they got the map control. They basically run whatever they wanted. No, they wouldn't get ganked while putting stuff down. But what I like more is the Curse's use of pink wards. Not to reveal wards, but to put them in places that are not likely to get swept, so they'll last forever. Oh, he makes it over the wall. Very nice shield on the E. Ziploc. Oh, he comes out on Dominate. Dominate, you can hear him yelling. He's saying, this is not what I wanted. Chris takes down Dominate as Quaz is still going for the fight. May he have enough to take down Ziploc, but no, it is going to be everybody else on the backside. Boy Boy is riding the back of Zamfira into this fight, coming out of nowhere, and it looks like they are both, or he himself, is going to have to turn away as both Chris and Zamfira try to grab the kill. Boy's going to be safe. Two for one fight overall, and if there's one fault in I Will Dominate, it's that uh, his name really speaks to his personality. He really loves diving in for fights. <laughs> I think his number one call in game is dive, 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 or go, go, go. And at a certain extent, you can kind of use that to your advantage. Chris knew he was going to get jumped on. Ziploc sat there in the brush and waited Ooh. for him to show up so that he could make sure they got that two-on-one kill really quickly. Cop with the quick feet. Able to get out of a few ultimates there. Brings him a little bit of safety in the bottom lane, but they still have to put their hard hats on here against the Leona Jinx. Boy Boy not getting any roam out of this lane, but he's also stopping Vampira in the same thing, so. 
It's working out for both of them, I should say. They're both farming very well, mm -hmm. and they're getting the items that they need. I like how Voids approached the matchup better, though. He started his lane behind in minions just due to the matchup. It's like, yeah, Zig's gonna outpush Needly pre-6, mm -hmm. but Voice spent so much time going back to Wraiths. Hey, look, see? He got back to Wraiths again. And honestly, he's never really missing any minion kills. He gets back to lane before the wave hits his turret, and he just easily last hits all that. So Voice not getting pressured out of lane, has the mana to keep sustaining himself, can even stop a Zamfira back right here, and just get more gold and more gold and more gold. He'll never get to Rome, but he can scale. Zamfira also has to, has to play that ward Rome game. They put him out. Draw, where's your ward? Looks like Void Boy's gonna try to crush this into the turret and do a little bit of his own. Riven pressuring the top lane. Zamfira coming back with Ziploc here, and maybe they'll do something, but Quaz and Dominate coming out of the woodwork to help out with Void Boy. They're gonna get some good damage onto the turret and prep that up for a little bit of takedown later. I really like that call by Curse because every sign they saw showed Zamfira backing right there. He was actually in Fog of War at the end right there. And you pull the rotation down to pressure mid turret when the mid laner is gone, that's a guaranteed turret. Zamfira staying is what saved that because you could just wave clear it quickly. But really good intuitive call by Curse to try to put the map pressure down. They don't lose much pressure top by doing that. Of course, Chris pushed as fast as he could, but still, Outer Turret was already dead. Boss came back pretty much in time. Dominate picking up Wraiths, itemizing, itemizing if it were to be the word. Ah, towards those Ninja Tabbies, seeing quite a bit of AD actually coming out of a cog that we haven't talked about yet. They're really relying on the just huge AP front end burst of Ziggs for all that damage, which is perfectly yeah, fine. Yeah, and that, that's absolutely fine, of course. Now, the popular builds for most of the tank champions is really armor heavy regardless. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. if this goes late game to see Randwin's Omen and Thornmail done on Quas by the end of yep. this. Uh, but certainly, yeah, um, it's it's interesting just because Chris honestly is, is known, I think, more for his AD-centric champions. Yeah. Uh, his Riven is very, very scary. And so uh, if Cog can just get one good team fight where they explode, uh, wow. they will just destroy everybody. Those, I think it's safe to say the dragon will be there is quite a bit. Quaz taking some good shots on the backside. The team doesn't want to help him just yet. A good flash pulls Ziploc all the way into the fight, but was that enough? It looks like they're still going down in this one, and Cognitive really takes the positioning. And I gotta say, Cog, even though they focused down the tank right there in that matchup, it's actually not even a true tank, because Quas hasn't gone for heavy defensive items. No. Yet. He's still in the middle of finishing a Randuin's Omen, and Cog is just really bursty. And yes, you actually can burst the tank if all five of you go for it, and uh, I know before we talked about a matchup where we had, I believe it was Gambit versus XDG, yeah. where they dived really hard for Annie and then just got eviscerated by Warwick Riven. Not the case here. They're killing those frontliners who would be diving, so there's no option for Cog or for a curse to counter engage that. Mid turret has been a huge turret dropped in these tournaments and in any tournament as it goes. The 3.14 patch though just opens up your jungler. Having these double bruiser compositions means they're always going to be in it, <laughs> but it's not the steal for Chris this time. I dominate getting over there to grab it up. Yeah, just about four seconds too early right there. Almost got away with it, but of course had the uh, broken wings ready, so that was at least well timed at the very end. So blue buff uh, still denied from Void Boy, mm -hmm. so I think Chris can still be happy that he made this happen for his dominate to smite. But uh, Cog has started to look a lot better now in the recent past. They've got uh, more champion kills, more turret kills. The only thing keeping Chris in this game right now is their really good dragon control. That aside, Cog are looking great this match. So what is Curse looking forward to fight? If they were winning laning phase so much, what's stopping them now from continuously going in or kind of pulling Dragon to be a fight and not taking it so fast? Yeah. Well, what's, problem, what's problematic for them is that their lineup doesn't synergize very well. It's a lot of things that are good. Like, Dominant and Quas can run to the back line and be really freaking hard to deal with. Kog yeah. doesn't have dedicated peel. Um, mm -hmm. Right, they, they just, that's not what their team really does. Their team goes in. Now, at the same time, Boy Boy is like, he doesn't really go in, he sits there and pokes and sits in the back line and like kind of helps Cop and Z can't do stuff. So you've got two sort of conflicting goals with how these champions work, uh, where it's like Voy and Cop are on their own, Z can helps dominate and Quas go in, and then if Curse can micromanage those fights well, then they're good. But there's no single like thing that Curse will do properly to win this match. And it looks like they haven't given up on the bottom lane. Quas hovering around a ward that just died next to him. And you will see that Zayn, King, and nothing here are going to play it a little differently with that vision. Almost up to that Triforce on Cop. And we do have, as we said, the Randuins after the Hydra onto Quas. Something they're looking for to keep these fights going. Because it seems like 
he's plateaued out there for a little bit. Yeah, eventually Quas will get to the point where he's not going to get one shot by these guys. Yeah. I just imagine that eventually happens because you really Ooh. can be a giant tank, but Boy's in trouble. Oh, Flash, and then he gets the W stun. Can he keep it going? Looks like he won't get the win Slash to get the kill. They do show that they are aggressive and want blood. Yeah, that flash was mandatory there by Void. But if he took the Mega Inferno yeah. Bomb, he would have been low enough for Wind Slash to execute him. Does deal more damage when you're lower, so pretty important thing to do right there. But still, it's it's a flash burn for. I mean, guess it's flash for flash, sure, but uh, it creates again more pressure. Dominate has to soak, Dominate has to soak up these minions here in mid, so it's it's power denied from Void, which is important. And it's different to see Quas is playing definitely more of a team Renekton, more than a split push Renekton. Chris is kind of being pulled out of lane for that reason as well, and top lane has almost been empty this kind of entire game. Yeah, because of the builds of these two champions, they're half squishy. They're building durability later in yeah. their item builds. They don't get to be those guys where they run up to the top lane, hit a second tier turret, and be like, oh, their team's coming, and like walk away like nothing's ever happening. Those two top lane champions can be killed rather quickly by the other lineup, so they have to give a lot more respect uh, to the other champions, play a little bit less aggressively, yep. and play more on their side of the map. Dominate. You just you got to use your ult towards sometimes. Feels yeah. good. No big deal. Try to run down Riven, but yeah. <laughs> style points either way. So we see him finally getting up to a Sunfire Cape. That'll be nicely stacked with Burning Agony on some AoE damage as he runs into the fight aimlessly. Triforce. Let's see how much gold you have, Cop. Cop is sitting on about 1,200 gold right now, so not too bad. He will have that quite soon for himself. Yep, once he goes back. All right, now, of course, being forced to sweep these away, and Zane King does sweep out the wards as well. A lot of actually wards we've been going on, so both these teams looking to switch their area of focus. Both these top laners have been playing so gun-shy that they're not finding ganks there anymore. So, like, okay, well, how about the duo lane, then? We've got flash terrors from Annie. We've got the ult from Zane King uh, on Leona. It's pretty easy to pick someone up with that hard CC and with a jungle gank. I'm very surprised to see that the wards, maybe it's just the times that they've died and people haven't been in the positions to plant them again. There's still a lot up for COG, but they're slowing down now for Curse. Maybe they feel like they have the vision they need for where they're pressed back and the turrets they don't have, but it's slowing down a bit. It is. Now, they reinvested in green wards finally, yeah. so they've yeah. got some of the inventories here. They're going to put them back down. Also, what I really like, uh, again, is that Curse uses a lot of pink wards. You only get one per person. They cost only a little bit more than green wards, but they last forever if they don't get spotted. So. Uh, it's, it's, I think, a really powerful way of warding, and it guarantees you uh, get a good amount of map control. And those have gotten swept out a little while ago. You can see Dominate. He knows that there is damage on the side of Captain Ziplock and Team Cog, so throwing down that ultimate just from a Vault Breaker into the fight, they are playing it safe rather than taking it dangerous. Cop still farm this bottom lane, 234 to 222, which that, though that CS has actually been quite even all game, only because Jinx just left lane has it gone a discrepancy. Yeah, and now Kyle, you can see them actually grouping towards the bottom side of the map right there. They realize that Dragon is what's been keeping them behind in this game. Again, the only reason Curse has a gold lead. And Cog, I think, has a better team fighting team, all things considered. They can engage through the Needly. Uh, they've got more team synergy overall and better, I think, team fight cleanup as well with Static Shift Bloodthirster on Jinx. So Cog looking for the 5v5 and saying, come fight us, we'll probably win the battle. Uh, so looking for their first Dragon of the game. Looks like they'll be getting pushed off of this one. So Curse able to take the Dragons very fast. Cog does not want to attempt this with Curse on their heels. So they're just going to wait it out. Zcat has the stun up. He has the flash up. Could be big. Well, Curse is better positioning because that bottom lane turret is so easy to pick up there with just Cop solo pushing it. These guys can delay Dragon with Javelins plus yeah. Cleavers while Cop takes basically a free turret because Cog aren't just saying, screw it, go for it. They're letting themselves get picked, do nothing, and lose a turret. All the poke coming in from the side of Curse, and it's not going to be sustained for too long. There is no heals coming in for the side of Cognitive Gaming, and they're forced to just back it out because they know they're going to get poked and outdanced. Yeah, I think Cog really could have just gone for it hardcore. They saw Cop bottom lane. He was 10 oh. to 15 seconds away from joining the fight, and they just hard engaged. <laughs> they want more. Might have worked. Yeah. And sure, now that the turret's dead, there's less pressure that Cop can put on for the split push, and Curse just kind of say, they're going around the wrong way, yeah, they got it. Very nice job. They just wanted to get that lane pressure in the mid lane from the minions. Not that it even went that far, but it was enough to really deter Curse enough, make them think they weren't doing it. And the entry of Cog again threw Curse off, and they had the same positioning. A little yeah. bit of mind game there. Yeah, yeah, it was a good play by Cog there. Uh, it's one of the best ways to create pressure. Actually, speaking of that, look at the top lane right here. Gigantic minion waves force champion rotations because they, yep. at a certain point, will spell turret damage or a turret kill, force people to respond to it. 
yeah, just the wave because they're going to be okay now. But um, you can force rotations by getting good uh, minion manipulation, and that can force lopsided fights. Whoa, the calling goes down. This is going to be a turret and maybe a little bit more. Really great job to deter the turret going down because they probably would have executed after that. Absolutely. If these guys stuck around with low health bars, yeah. pretty good abilities uh, to still go in. Zekin still has all his summoners, still has tippers available as well, plus boots of mobility. So if Andy wants to catch you, she's going to be able to do that. And Cog respecting that, doing a good job with that one. Um, but now it's sort of Curse who says, you know what? They've kind of unlocked what they want their team comp to do. With Death Cap done on Boy Boy, he's got enough poke to really be a threat to the back line, or even to the front line, just hit Ziploc and Chris in the face. But Curse can play a siege game and say, we're going to throw javelins and cleavers at you, and you'll have to give up turrets slowly but surely. So we're going to see, once again, at the scoreboards. It's interesting to look at, as we have the bruiser meta, the fact that Quaz and Dominate are kind of playing the health bruisers, and you kind of have the damage bruisers on the side of Ziploc and Chris with Riven and Vi. So they're going to have to really get that, actually getting a little defense for themselves now, which is good. Like you said, Riven probably seconding that spirit visage item. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense, honestly. He's fighting three mesh damage dealers, largely mesh right. damage dealers, with uh, Nidalee, Annie, and uh, Dr. Sword Mundo in there being pretty scary. Uh, but overall, it's going to help Chris really be a lot more mobile and split pushy as well. It's going to give him the chance to get across the map a bit faster, get rid of the waves, and create some of that pressure that his team really kind of needs. That Triforce was finished well, quite a while ago, along with the Static Shiv, but... Mm -hmm. Noting the two items on our AD carries now, that pressure is going to come from the Static Shiv quite a bit, but the Wave Clear is already decently up there for Curse. The yeah. poke is really what they're looking for. Yeah, right now the, the key players in team fights are Chris and Void Boy. Those are the two guys who are probably going to have, well, actually with Zemfira getting a Void Staff, he's huge in this one as well. But the AD carries yeah. are at sort of their like low to mid tier level right now. Two to three items completed. Uh, Cop definitely more powerful right now. This is going to put out a, a lot of damage with the spell burst overall. But in the, in the near future, nothing here is going to start scaling a lot harder. When Infinity Edge is done, nothing here becomes the primary factor of the game for both teams in protecting him and as well as getting rid of him on Curse's side. Yep. Right now, though, it's going to be mid laners and top laners doing a lot. Dominate with some damage. And he's able to get out of this one, but at the force, all. Looks like he's able to back out. Everybody just throwing it back and forth. Both teams have a good amount of kind of poke or retaliation that they can give. Ooh, very nice dodge by Zamfir. That would have been a full damage spear. Absolutely, but the initiative is going to come in. They're looking for the fight. Solar Flare is deep down, and it doesn't look like it's going to be enough to connect. Ziploc gets very caught up. Inferno Bomb hits, but it's the outside, and everybody's usually or enough to get out. Quaz goes down to the wind slash as it comes around, and it looks like everybody disperses with the two kills to one coming in. A really hectic fight. Honestly, a bit of an over-engage here by Cog. They can play a little bit more with the Zix bombs, and it would have worked a bit better for these guys, but whatever. They're sticking around, and honestly, just because they did so much AoE damage due to Zix and Riven, it's actually Cog who lost more members but have the map control because they're just healthier. Their positioning is ridiculous. Their, so their lanes that need to be alive and do damage and get experience. Everyone needs experience, but it's Ziploc and Zane King that are dying. They're initiators, the ones that should be dying. Everybody else that needs damage and experience has been alive and up, except for the one kill on Chris. So they've been positioning super well in these fights. Yeah, and it's only gonna get better for these guys. Zane King's already started building durability. Now we had the Giant's Belt in that last fight, but he's gonna keep going up in, in durability here. He doesn't have much else to buy except for actual stats here. So at a certain point, especially with someone like Needly who doesn't kill tanks for mm -hmm. a living, uh, Zane King and Captain Ziploc are going to be that really incredibly hard to deal with front line that unlocks a lot of team fighting for these guys. So the kills now going in favor of COG. They know they have a bit of these fights in their favor, but the scaling is still yet to fully happen on the side of Curse. Their champions still going quite into the late game and may negate the damage that Riven, even Vi is going to start, or Vi, even Riven is going to start bringing out. Yeah, for sure. And honestly, Quas is going to basically turn into full tank mode pretty soon. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the armor scaling per level, most champions end the game with 70 to 80 armor without any items, just from runes and leveling up. Yeah. And so if you don't buy any armor pen, Ravenous Hydra Renekton only deals so much damage. It's 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 almost going to be more about dominate. Yeah. And then, well, can they kill the Jinx in time? Like, Cog is going to scale pretty much to infinity here. Jinx and, and uh, Ziggs both are just so explosive late Ooh, Zekan, one after the other. And uh, that last one's going to be enough to take him down. Very nice job. And well done by these guys. They have that pick potential. That is what Leona does. Double talked about that on the analyst test yesterday, saying, look, wow. it's harder to respect the Leona engagement range. It's just harder to keep that in mind. They're going to get free kills this way. 30 seconds. 
is enough time to set up Baron, but Zekent will be alive in time to probably help Fort Curse contest it if they want to. Curse slowly moving down mid. They are waiting for Cop to catch up to the group here. They do gather with him right around the Wraith area. Zephyr is going to get this lane pushed. The wards slowing down. You can see they're circling around their objectives more and not so much for the jungle invades. It's going to be all about these dance out fights for a little bit. Yep, Curse knows the dragon's important. They're moving around, putting traps down, which I like. It's a good little thing Needle can do, help with the vision game as well. Shredding but, some uh, armor. Yeah, but here's the issue. Is so, so Chris is pushing the bottom lane, but he's kind of alone right here. He could get jumped on, but at the same time, he's creating pressure, allowing his team to rotate into position. If they follow, that is a weird angle to get pinched on down from the river, so they know to keep themselves back. Boy, boy, just getting a little bit of check on the brush with a spear, and he finds good damage. Wow, they do not want any bit of dominate. Quick Talisman of Ascension keeps them safe. Ooh. And out of the way, hard hats are on for this one. Curses into the pit, and they put themselves very much so in the pit here. Looks like they should be able to take it. The smite does not come down from Captain Ziplock, but they're stuck. This is the fight, Freak. They go in on the Boy Boy. They're going to be going for that quick burst damage of him. Dominate falls right after. They have Curse's number on this one. Quaz is in the fight, but it's a 5v1, and there's not much you can do about it. Cop was out of position that entire fight right there, was sucked into the bottom lane, killing minions that Chris had pushed into the lane and couldn't do anything to that fight. Well read here by Cog. You saw in the bottom corner, that was Cop right there. Zekent also out of position, off to the side, never gets in on the fight. And yes, you can just dive bruisers as a group if wow. no one's there to punish you for it. Amazing decision right there by Cog, knowing they had the fight. Gives them Baron as well. That was a very grave mistake by Curse. Yeah, pinching yourself in for a Ziggs and a Riven is not the smartest idea in small area. No. 12 to 7 with 34 minutes on the clock. Cog has taken the lead in everything but turrets now. Good job on Curse by finding another objective as it is kind of, you know, back against the wall for them right now. They're still getting a little step up. Yeah, and the problem is it's just so hard for Curse to turn this around because they don't, like, Needly doesn't do a whole lot when you're behind because yeah. you tend to just weather the poke and say, you know what, screw it, we'll suck it up. I wouldn't even be surprised to see War Mogs come through at some point for Cog just for the regen, uh, just because it'll let them take an extra spear to the face and get that health back at some point. But in general, really, it's like Quas has fallen off at this point. Chris will actually outscale Renekton. Um, Captain Ziploc is still going to be a really good initiator. Cog in general can just keep picking fights, so Curse has to be super afraid of the open field, and nothing here is only going to continue to outscale Cop. So I think it needs something of a miracle here for Curse to get a win. Dominate, considering that an extra burst of health will be what they need to get through the fight, picks himself up a red pot, knowing that, as we said before, there's a lot of front end damage on Cog, and then to be followed up when the spells come back up. So that second he lives may be the second they need to turn the fight around. Oh, definitely. Whenever you have whenever you have ability-based champions who are in danger of dying, that second rotation is actually super important. Some champions don't need it. Some, Ooh. it's everything for them. Zoom, zoom down mid lane here. Talisman of Ascension goes off for Curse, and looks like they're going to get a nice turret. Cop really helping out with that Triforce now. He's been off and about, but now finally joins the team for the pressure. And it looks like they're going to trade one for one onto that one. Still a better trade for Curse overall. Oh now yeah. turrets Second aren't tier worth mid. exactly. Turrets aren't worth the same amount of gold anymore. Before we had this like subjective. Well, a secondary tier turrets like worth more. And, like mids kind of worth more. Because <laughs> a lot of maps like well actually no. Straight up tier two turrets are just worth more than outer yep. turrets here. So despite losing the last team by losing Baron buff, good call by Curse right there. This gives me some hope that these guys are still their minds are in the game. They're not down and out, and they're thinking, how else can we get in this game? What else can we do to get ourselves an advantage? Seeing the builds coming out now, we look at Riven. You were saying the last whisper, but also the need for the guardian angel of a Riven, right? So that damage may not be there, but we saw what happened. If Curse makes a mistake again and bunches up, they have all the damage they need. Yeah, I kind of like Chris's item choice here. Even though he's going to be low damage, it's sort of a, it's like a mature read on what he needs to do this game. In solo queue, everyone loves to build damage, right? Seven Bloodthusters <laughs> is like everyone's favorite Riven build. But realistically here, he's like, look, I need to be a secondary initiator. I need to follow up, just deal my base damages, be super disruptive, and not drop down right away. Because nothing here in Zephyra can carry. Chris just needs to be a frontliner. It's a really good choice here for Cog. The initiations. Got to give a huge hand to Zane King and Ziploc here for really putting forth an effort to get Cog moving and get the momentum, or stay the momentum. Like we said, they're the only ones with the deaths, and they make sure the back line is completely safe. We talked a little bit about not having too much peel on the side of Curse because everybody's diving, and we're seeing what the effect is. Exactly. That uh, It's really on Cop and his own mechanics to keep himself alive. Same for Void, the two squishies that are going to get targeted. 
by the end of team fights is can they peel away from this? Can they dodge the skill shots in the CCs? And it's going to be kind of on them when Kagamensha gets through to the back line. A lot more siege than they thought they would have at this point in the game. Kurs can't really even step off the turret to throw their spears, to throw their cleavers because Kag is always out of range until they wait for that. So you have two major battles right now. You've got this, the, the giant poke war uh, with uh, Needly, Mundo, and Lucian all fighting off against Jinx and Ziggs, but that's a battle that Kog is winning due to Baron Ba. And they can go in here if they want, or just take the free turret. Just, just kind of putting themselves in the better position, taking down that. Five to four now as they grab a lead in everything in this game. 37 minutes in, they're doing quite well on CS. Kopp has kept himself up in the CS right now, but he is not being a factor in these fights. He was in the early game, but yeah. that's it's really only if you think about that fight, it's because they stomped on top of him and made him in the fight. Exactly, and now Kurs have kind of squandered that early advantage anyway now. Jinx, again, going to continue to outscale. And, uh, you know, Kwasi had such an early lead as well. Kind of lost that one. The Jinx, or sorry, not the Jinx, the uh, the Needly pick from Boy Boy, right, never got to really get the siege game going and, and force an early mid game sort of set of fights. They threw a couple of battles, gave Cog map control. Now, the other battle I was talking about when we were sieging bottom lane is the Chris versus Quas matchup. The, Chris Quas. Yeah. Uh, good, what, hip hop group? Yeah. Am I just dumb? Okay, got I got that one right. Um, now I just feel bad. But uh, <laughs> Chris had, what, at one point it was like 26 to 6 in minions. Chris was getting completely dumpstered. His lane went down really hard. And now Chris is up 40 minions, right? He's winning the matchup. He's putting pressure on Quas's turret. So the 1v1's better for Cog. The 4v4, at least with Baron buff, was better for Cog. And again, Curse has to say, well, we didn't even have that much playmaking. And they've mm -hmm. got to find something to get themselves into this game. See what they can do. Something I mentioned earlier that's not playing out in the way because Quas stopped buying that HP is that he's actually... Out, getting out damaged by Chris right now, even with the Guardian Angel going down. They're really working that in their favor. It's not really the Bruiser HP to the Bruiser Damagers. They're just really working it well with their champions they have. 319 to 284. There was at least a 30 CS discrepancy in that lane in the, in the beginning of the game. Oh, yeah, and it's completely turned the other way around. You just saw from the Dragon being taken down, both players, uh, both teams, I should say, assessment of the map as it stands. Cog was like, Dragon came up, let's go take it. Curse was like, Dragon came up, it's theirs for free, they're the stronger team. And that's, both teams are now understanding this as the mindset here for this game. And so, mm -hmm. uh, Curse, I think they unlock a little bit with the blue buff. Baron's going to be very important as well. Uh, Curse knows that if you really let the game just, and just like kind of let nothing happen for a long time, Cog loses the sort yeah. of 4,000 gold lead they have. It, it means a lot less over time. Um, and so it's it's really going to be, I think, the Baron Dance and then the push that surround the setup for the Baron Dance that yeah. are going to be really important now in the next minute or so. I feel like COG, once they know they have somewhat of a lead here, they continuously go in. We saw, whoa, Ziploc going pretty hard there with Talisman. We saw Quaz and Dominate keep going after top lane, but they only got the first turret. And then they kind of stopped at the advantage they were snowballing. And yeah, you got a TM mat, but didn't go around to use it in the fight. So it's like they almost squandered the power they had at the time. They Cog did. isn't letting it go. They see it, they take it, and they move on to more. And you're seeing how thirsty they are for team fights. You yeah, just saw absolutely. the Talisman of Ascension active and the Vault Breaker. Cog trying to get a pick, saying, the thing is, they had, they had rotated Chris down first. Watch for this again. They're going to look for a battle. They'll pull Chris before Quas comes down, get a momentary 5v4 with an engage, and it's going to be a fight that Chris can't win. They look like a flying V every time they come around a corner <laughs> ready to engage. They're literally that close to each other, ready to be on each other's side. Yeah, Spears, the cleavers, not enough. They're still just dodging them out. They know the game to play now. Yeah, all the various cogs are working together as one sort of machine of unison here. These guys don't are clicking. I, I do say. I mean, it's their own name. They, they chose to be a, a very unified team it's right like here. when somebody says the movie name. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Dominate uh -oh. getting jumped on. Dominate definitely getting jumped on. Forrest used the ultimate and he goes right by. They take down Zekan. Flash Tibbers? I don't think so. Ziploc makes it out with the ability shield. Actually, you got to lock it there. Very nice. Yeah, the two of them together getting him just enough health, and that is what can happen. They can dive in. The thing is, the battle started by diving Dominate. Like, he took a bunch of damage, and they switched targets mid-flight. Mm -hmm. Zekan couldn't even flash, couldn't exhaust, couldn't tibbers. Cog are very aggressive. They have the ability to quickly take fights, exert their pressure, and curse still. And until Curse get a split push that can beat Chris, they don't have a way out of this stranglehold. 
So many wards that they're walking through right now, and it pretty much sets up a birthday party for Cog to come in here. Presents everywhere. Cop is going to be the next one to be opened up. Looks like they are grabbing a turret, though, as you see in the pit. The wave is crushing it down, so a little bit of money to come back off of this, but it's it's only money to their base falling down. So one good move that Quas made, though, is he's backdooring, or he's, yeah, he's basically backdooring minions on the other side of the map, so Cog has to backdoor turrets and well, not inhibitors, they get no armor MR anyway, but wow. uh, force that turret to be backdoored, and if they go for the Nexus, the same situation arises. So it, it's mid inhibitor, mid turret, and then arguably Baron because it's 5v3 on the map. Quaz locking in a black cleaver. Innovation trying to stay unpredictable. Is it going to work for his team, though? His presence has fallen off in the fight, and so almost so is Dominates. We've seen Mundo being a huge factor here, but it seems like the champions just can't do much to the factor of how hard Cog is scaling. Yeah, exactly. So Cog's going to get complete control over this Baron. They're in a happy place, of course, and uh, it's honestly their, their team comp just working out really well right here. So here we go. Cog, they're going to reset the map. We got Baron buff. They've got a whole bunch of gold inventories right now, looking at close to 2,000 gold on some of these guys. And then it's going to be them looking for just the game winning push. It'll probably be top lane. There's a few more turrets to kill there, but arguably one of the side lanes. Get two inhibs down, close the game out from that. Picking up the resources of what they can. You can see Cog feeling very confident, getting all their pink wards placed out. At least one right now in the base, or the jungle of Curse. So they're not worried about what gold goes expended there. Boy Boy's going to pick that up for himself. So we got Riven in the top lane. Chris is going to back, and he gives himself a black cleaver as well, right off the bat. Must have been a sale. <laughs> Two for one, man. Two for one. So both top laners getting pretty similar builds overall. But of course, Chris just farther ahead right here. He's got kills, he's got minions, and he's got a team with more global objectives here. Uh, and at this point, right, uh, Cog know they're in sort of Let's close the game out mode. They've got four red trinkets in inventory. The one guy with the yellow trinket actually upgraded it to the pink ward dropper. So these guys, all five of them are saying, we're going to remove your vision. We're going to own your jungle. And Curse have to play in a smaller and smaller and smaller circle on the map inside their own base now. Oh, Zane King, good hands, Isotoners. 44 minutes onto this game. It looks like it still stands true. The back line staying safe. Chris has not died since we mentioned this, and neither has Zamfir or nothing here. They have always been soaking up experience and always been able to push or participate in the next objective. Yeah, these guys have been doing an amazing job as a team. They're putting the right people in the right spot. Again, Chris on the side lane push. Still, he is ahead of Quas, a full item ahead of Quas, actually. So that's a very easy one to one matchup to win. And the Baron oh. buff, blue buff, Ziggs will eventually poke out Curse. Even I will dominate taking meaningful damage here. This is going to get hard for Curse. You got. Nothing here, already starting to build Randuins, being able to peel for himself. Curse is still trying to do things for each other, so it's just surmounting on them right now. They're going to have some multitasking to do as the game goes on. Yeah, and actually Chris is already sweeping himself throughout the base. He wants to join this fight for the inhibitor. Make it a 5v5 because they'd win that battle. That, oh my gosh, Zamfira is just chunking people away. They make it impossible to even guard an inhibitor versus three, but they're being pinched in here. Just the coordination by Cog is unreal. It's absolutely great right here. So Curse at this point says, you know what? I really feel like there's there's not a lot of ways back into this game. They've got to think about the rest of the series for themselves. But uh, because they've honestly, none of this has worked for a very long time for Curse right here. They had, I think, a very small window for their team composition. Mm -hmm. They needed to get it while Lucian was still more powerful than Jinx, while Renekton was still um, ahead of uh, the Riven from Chris, and that time has passed. And there, like I said, there's really no fallback pattern for this lineup. They don't do any one thing very well. So they can't force like a curse style engage to win a team fight by like outclassifying the opposition. Instead, it's them kind of getting worn down by Cog playing their game plan. Curse yeah. think of a new game plan for game two, game three, and beyond. It's really a matter of time now. Cog is just trying to get the last bit of front door beaten down. You see, Boy Boy had a very tough game in mid. We said that was going to be a, both a roaming lane, and he's only been able to pick up assists in these fights. If you're going to have an Italy, she has to be above and beyond if you're this far into the game. Exactly. She's got to be really useful. Oh, okay, that's a kill, and the fight's going to continue. It is going to. Boy Boy gets locked up, but he does flash. Mega Inferno Rocket goes right past. They get the turret. That's going to get Jinx excited, and they are going to keep going in on this fight. They got Cop in the rise. He's going to stand. He is going to go down valiantly, and so will the Nexus turrets. Very well played by Cognitive Gaming here. Underdogs for the analyst, underdogs for the fan vote as well. But these guys showed up to play on the biggest stage of their lives.
Wow, I am yeah. very surprised at that matchup. Complete besides Chris and a few others, they have played on the main stage, but that's like being thrown into a pool and then taken out and somebody says, learn to swim on a big stage. <laughs> right? You don't get to swim for very long. No. For, to come out that strong, hold that steady in that game, I, I'm quite impressed. I am too. They came in, they put a very good plan together, their team comp fit together nicely. They even held up against Curse's champ select little game, saying yep. that could be a dominate Mundo. Let's well, beat you as first up. Yeah, it was like everything in champ select, like everything in the game was played so well. They gave up some dragons, yeah. didn't have to care about it too much. Played their lanes well, did all that so wonderfully. Cog looked very prepared for that match, and it. Everything clicked for them. It's one of those things that kind of you rack your brain around because you're like, Curse was grabbing dragons. They were completely free. We, we, we got to remember, TSM back in the day said sometimes it's not worth, even if you don't have a lead, throwing more to the other team by going after that dragon, trying yep. to defend it. Just let it go. There's more to come. Exactly. You can come back from most deficits. We've yep. seen crazy comebacks in League of Legends overall, but you don't get those comebacks if you give your team, if you give your opponents 10,000 gold yeah. in 10 minutes. You've got to play reserve, say, okay, you know what, that one's yours, that's fine. You've got another 2% up on us, but we'll get it back next time. Another thing in that game, Zamfira and nothing here, not dying towards the end. One death on the Chris, unless they, they went down towards the end of the game, and they did not. 7-0-9, 4-0-7, and Chris was 6-1-10. and 10. That's literally understanding how to use the back line. Exactly. These guys played their entire composition so well. And to be fair, right, they've got... The only people who, had, who died were the melee champions, the right. ones who were diving into start fights, and those were expected deaths. Using Riven as, a, as an initiator, right, building mostly tank yep. stats, only offensive items being a Black Cleaver, Last Whisper kind of later on in the build, as well mm -hmm. as, of course, the first item, Ravenous Hydra, and saying, yes, we're going to dive in on you, we're going to just lock down the front line. They didn't right. even care about killing the bruises. That was fine. They could kill, dominate, and quash and they just kind of keep yeah. pushing forward, and all on the back of nothing here in Zamfira being untouched, being Backline, yeah. glass cannon damage, outputting damage the entire time. I mean, yeah, you think Mundo and Renekton. They're going to be on your back line. It's not like they had an easy game. Didn't but in to. those initiations, we kind of saw in the first one at Dragon, Quas dove through the team, and everybody chased Vi down to bottom lane. Quas died yeah. by himself. That was a, seemed like a little bit of commu miscommunication there. That was, that was probably the, the single worst mistake there for yeah. Curse, the one that probably opened the game up the most, because it ended up being like a four-for-one team fight off yeah. of a dragon yeah. kill. And it was, it was a miscommunication. Quas went one way to the other, the team went the other way, and it broke a lot for those guys. They fixed mistakes like that.